Hello artists! Today in art class we're going to be listening to the story Giraffes Can't Dance and we're going to be learning all about this guy. His name is Gerald and he's a giraffe that never knew he could dance before. After we listen to the story we're going to be creating our own version of Gerald and he'll be dancing in the moonlight. I hope you're ready to have some fun. Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Rees. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now, every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming, and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hoofs had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I am dancing, yes I am dancing, I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle, we must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, let us know, or tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. For today's art lesson, we are gonna be creating our very own Gerald. You're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil to start. And then we'll be needing some materials to color things in with later. So we're gonna be working on a drawing of Gerald. And if you think back toward the end where he does start to dance, and go back to the one page where they showed him in three different poses, you really can draw your Gerald any way you want. So you could have your Gerald um, 
kind of flipped over a little bit. You can have your Gerald up in the air. You can have your Gerald with one leg up and one leg down this way and then both legs on the ground. It's really up to you. Um, maybe you even have another idea of how you would like to do that. So we're gonna work on that today and we're gonna make we're gonna make our very own Gerald. I'm gonna make sure, there we go. I just wanna make sure that the camera's right there. Okay, so we're gonna start kinda up here in this area at the top of your paper and we're gonna make Gerald's head. So you have to decide which way you want Gerald's head to face. I'm gonna draw Gerald's head going this way, but you can draw it the other way if you would like. And then we're gonna have it go back up. So I'm gonna make this a little darker so you can see it better. And then I'm gonna give Gerald a mouth and two eyes, but his eyes are closed in this one. You could have his eyes open or closed, it's up to you. And the two little horns. So there's one horn and then a little line and another horn. And then Gerald has two ears. So we're gonna make an ear on each side. And then we have to draw this long neck and we're gonna use two lines that kind of curve. And then we're gonna add the body down here and you can create your own shape for the body. We're gonna have the legs. So there's four legs, so you have to decide where the legs are gonna go. I'm gonna have Gerald's legs kind of bending all the way down. Um, I think I might have this leg bending this way. And then I'm gonna have Gerald have two legs, like one up in the air, kind of like he's doing a disco move. And they don't have to be straight lines, you know? They're, they have kind of bony looking legs. So you can definitely draw them how you want and kind of make them a little bit wiggly or bony looking. And don't forget to draw little lines for the hooves there too. All right, and then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna add some little spots. And they're just like little wiggly lines. And I'm gonna keep his belly kind of open so I can just color it yellow, but I'm gonna kind of do some other little giraffe pattern shapes on this side. And then I'm gonna add some to the legs. All four. All right. Then I'm gonna have you find one of your black markers, excuse me, and Go ahead and trace around your giraffe. And then we're also gonna add 
some hair on our giraffe's neck too. So you can go ahead and add that in your picture. And then you're gonna need yellow, orange, and brown. And we're gonna use some crayons for this part. All right. And I'm gonna start with the, oh, you know what I didn't trace? I'm gonna trace the eyes. I kind of forgot to do that part. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color in with my yellow the face. Oops. And I'm gonna color the body around where the spots are. So, for example, I'll show you in just a sec here. I'm gonna color up to that spot and then I'm gonna go around it. And I'm gonna color down and around like that. And I'm gonna also work on the legs as I go, doing the same thing. And then I'm gonna use my orange and brown and I'm gonna try to blend those colors a little bit and make the spots on my giraffe. But I'm gonna finish the yellow first. Now, if you don't have crayons handy, but you do have markers, you can use markers. You just have to make sure that you're coloring in neatly with them and filling in your spaces too. If you had colored pencils instead, that would work okay too. And then we're gonna take our brown and we'll kind of color in, or you could even use your orange and kind of color in the hair on the neck. And then I'm gonna have the spots be kind of orangey brown. You could do just brown, you could do just orange. I'm gonna leave that totally up to you. And then I'm gonna take that orange and I'm just gonna blend it. I love blending colors together with crayons. Colored pencils too, you can blend markers, that doesn't really work too well, but colored pencils, crayons, if you had oil pastels, that, that really works nicely for blending too. All right. So we're going to take our pencil and we're going to figure out next where we want to put our moon. Since Gerald was dancing in the moonlight, we're going to figure out, do we want it on the left side? Do we want it on the right side? It's really up to you. Um, I think I'm going to put, hmm, I think I'm going to put the moon over this side, but you decide where you want it. And we're going to make it kind of big. If you, um, it does not have to be a perfect circle. 
If you are having a hard time though with drawing a circle shape, look for something around your house or wherever you are that you could trace to make a circle shape. And we're gonna do that. All right, then we're also gonna draw a little line for the ground. And it does not have to be a straight line at all. It could be a curvy line. And you could even make a couple different sets of lines if you want there to be different areas too. You could do that. And then we can also add some little circle areas for stars, or you can draw star shapes in the sky if you prefer. I'm just gonna do some little circles since he's dancing at nighttime. And then it's up to you how you want to color in <clears throat> your moon. If you wanna leave it white, you can just leave it white. Um, if you wanna use yellow, you can use yellow. I'm gonna leave it white, but I'm gonna color in my stars with the yellow. I'm gonna go through and do that. And then I think what I might do is actually take, I have a blue, oh, where is it? It's kind of, oh, this one, sort of like a teal color. They call it blue green. Um, and I think I'm just gonna kind of trace the edge of the moon with that, but I'm gonna leave the moon itself white. Like that, okay? And then I'm gonna choose either black or purple or blue, some kind of beautiful nighttime sky color, and we're gonna color in our sky. So go ahead and use your crayon and just go ahead and color back and forth and color in your sky. Be careful when you get to the edge of your giraffe. Just kind of go right up to the edge like that and then go around. Okay, and then be careful when you get to your stars and just kind of go around them. Now what would be really fun and this is just if you happen to have watercolors at home, after you color your sky with a crayon, you could even go back over it with a watercolor um, and you could paint over your sky. And that watercolor paint's gonna soak into the little white areas. Now I know many of you don't have watercolors at home, so don't worry about it. Um, I'm not gonna use watercolors today on this, but I just wanted to mention it to you so that if you actually have them at home and your family says it's okay for you to use them for this, you could actually go ahead and paint over your sky with them too. All and I'm gonna color in under here. And then I just have a little bit more to do on this side. I'm gonna color right there too. And then I just need to think about when I'm done coloring this guy, what color do I want the ground to be? Do I want it to be green for grass? Do I want it to be brown more for dirt or dried grasses? Do I wanna add little drawings of plants and things? or flowers, you can do all of that. You can be thinking about all of that. Looks like I forgot to color in my little star there. So I'm gonna go back to that with my yellow. And down here, I'm gonna pull out a couple different greens. And you could even use yellow and green on your grass if you wanted to, or brown, like I said. And I'm gonna add some little lines to it for a little bit of texture. 
kind of in this area. And then more of the background area. And then I'm gonna be coloring over. And I could even create a darker line here by pushing harder. And I'm just going back and forth, coloring that in neatly all the way up to the edge of my Gerald. And down here. And then a little bit more at the bottom. And I'm just pushing a little harder right now. So my color looks a little darker than it did up top. So the harder you push with your crayon, the more pressure you put, the darker it will be. You don't wanna push so hard that you break it, but you can definitely um, get different darknesses or lightnesses by how hard, by the pressure of how hard you push. Different, we call it different values too. Lighter value or a darker value. And there's my Gerald. When you're all done with your drawing of Gerald, you'll have Gerald colored in, you'll have your sky colored in, and your ground colored in. I can't wait to see all the different fun poses that you put Gerald in as he was learning how to dance. I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time.